Hi there. The radioactive decay or the rate of change of the radioactive substance follows the exponential law. This exponential law is a very common phenomena seen in nature. In simple words, the rate of decay depends on the amount of substance present. For example, we know intuitively that rate of decay for sample 1 will be more than rate of decay for sample 2. So we write dn by dt is equal to minus lambda n and lambda is dependent on the type of material. So we can write the rate of decay for sample 1 and sample 3 as shown here. Now radioactive substances like uranium, polonium etc have very large number of atoms and also we want to remove the dependence on the number of atoms at the start. So lambda is defined as the fraction of atoms that decay per second. Lambda being a fraction of atoms that decay is a very important concept. Here in our example we have 2 out of 8 apples decaying which is equal to 1 upon 4 apples decaying and therefore we take lambda as 0.25 apples that are decaying per day. So with that we get the decay rate as 2 for sample 1 and 1 for sample 2 and 3 for sample 3. So here we will see that the decay constant is a fraction or less than 1 in all these cases. However, for bismuth and lithium it is more than 1. This is so because uh, the half-life of bismuth and lithium is very very less than 1 and lambda is defined as a fraction per second, fraction of decay per second and in one second more than the whole of bismuth or lithium will decay. This is the equation that we are familiar with. Here n is the amount remaining after time t and starting with n0. Let us take three hypothetical materials with different lambda and see their behavior. We find that the material with the highest lambda or the highest decay factor decays the fastest, obviously. One question that may come up is uh, when we say lambda as 50% atoms decay per second, uh, why are we not seeing a 50% decay here after one second? And the reason for that is uh, let's assume that each second is further divided into 1000 milliseconds and the decay is happening in each millisecond and because the rate is dependent upon the amount present, the rate keeps decreasing as the amount decreases within each millisecond of the second. So here we find that material 1 reaches its half-life after about 1.4 second. Uh, material 2 reaches its half-life at about 2.8 seconds and so on. So here is our first example. This is a standard equation which you should remember and the derivation for this you can find it in your school books. Here is our second example.
In this example, the material has two type of decay with two different rates. So we first find out the number of half lives based on the material remaining after time t. This is an important concept. The combined lambda for the material can be taken as sum of alpha and beta. So for example, if lambda for alpha is 50% of dk per second and for beta it is 25%, we can say that after one second, 75% of the material would have decayed. Putting in the values, we get our answer. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.